All right, everybody, why don't we get started? Um, thanks for attending uh, what is, uh, for all of us, our last breakout session of the day. Uh, by now, you may have been to other breakouts. Hopefully, you've been down on the expo floor, kind of seen all the products, um, had a chance to kind of get a flavor of all the products and solutions on, on display here. Uh, what we'll be talking about over the next 40 minutes or so, this, this won't, I'm not going to use the full, ha full hour, is, is the idea of running a unified communications platform on top of a virtual desktop infrastructure and some of the benefits that can be derived from that. Uh, my name is Dan O'Farrell. I'm with the cloud client computing team within Dell, and we're the group that focuses on virtual desktops, or VDI, virtual desktop infrastructure. Um, that's kind of our sole purpose. We're uh, a subset of what Dell calls client solutions. So think of all the desktop PCs, uh, the precision workstations, the tablets, all that, all those little endpoints, we're a subset of that. Uh, and we offer what we call thin and zero clients, which are purpose-built endpoints designed uh, for VDI environments. And uh, what I want to highlight here is running Link, or now it's, I guess it's Skype for Business, on top of a virtual desktop infrastructure and some of the benefits that can be derived from that. So um, how many people here use either Link or some other form of unified communications at, uh, at your organization? Most of us, okay. How about anybody who has any virtual desktop infrastructure installed in their organization? Okay, smaller subset. So what I'm gonna talk about is kind of the intersection of those two things and, and how that can, can offer, allow you to offer a super secure, very easy to implement version of unified communications or for that matter, uh, any other application that's key within your, within your organization. Um, I'm not going to belabor each one of these reasons why or, or you know, antidotes as, anecdotes as to why it's beneficial to move to a unified communication platform. Uh, we within Dell use it all the time. Uh, the group that I'm in uses Link. Um, and it is just a great way to collaborate. IM people, share desktops, share videos, share applications with other groups whether that's somebody on campus or somebody across the world. So it's a great, a great kind of real-time collaboration tool. And it's part of kind of the overall Microsoft package of productivity tools uh, in addition to uh, you know, Office and SharePoint and uh, Exchange and everything else that Microsoft offers. They're a key pro a partner of ours, obviously, within Dell. And this is what I was just mentioning. You know, at Dell, we view ourselves as kind of the platform provider for the, app, the delivery of applications, whether those apps are your typical Microsoft Office suite or database stuff or SharePoint or something like Unified Communications in the form of Skype for Business. Uh, we view ourselves as kind of the foundation to offer the hardware and software platforms upon which you can deliver these, these uh, productivity tools to your people. So the way we look at it is kind of we phrase, coined the phrase the Dell office, right? The typical productivity center for your organization where, you know, we want to allow these basic capabilities, right? We want you to be very fluid and flexible with your workspaces to give your people what they need and when in terms of their tools. We want to allow you to be able to adhere to, um, um, you know, standards that have to be met within your type of business. For example, we sell a lot into healthcare, right? Healthcare cares in the U.S. about HIPAA. Um, you know, we sell a lot into government. We sell a lot into banking and finance, uh, especially for regulated industries. This is really important, and we help uh, companies meet whatever compliance restrictions they have to meet. Um, obviously, this is kind of um, apple pie, but progressive human resource policy. So, in other words, we want to make sure that as we offer this foundation for the delivery of these Microsoft apps, that it's done uh, in a form where you know, it's very, very easy to set policy, to enforce policy, things like access restrictions, uh, things like limiting or not what capabilities people have from their specified endpoints of choice. And UCC sitting on top of this is kind of the creme de la creme when it comes to kind of collaboration and productivity tools. So we'll talk about how with virtual desktops, coupled with this, we can enable you to do it in a very secure, uh, yet at the same time very easy way. So um, a little bit on desktop virtualization. If you think about it, you know, server virtualization has been around for a couple decades. Uh, various forms of virtual, virtualizing storage has been around for probably for, for at least the last decade. Desktop virtualization kind of started coming into the norm about five years ago. Um, 
not everybody's empl employing it, uh, which, which is fine because we submit that not everybody should be on a virtual desktop, but there are probably groups within your organization that can benefit from it. So what are the benefits? Number one, and, and first and foremost, you know, virtualizing the desktop simply means you take the desktop that we're all used to, typically it's right at our fingertips, and moving it into the data center. So that every time I hit a keystroke or a file drag and drop or a save, it's not happening locally, it's actually happening in the data center. So the analogy I make to people is that it's like watching TV at home. When you watch TV at home, those pixels which are displaying on your TV screen are not originating inside the TV. They're coming from the broadcast networks or the content providers. Much the same way, when I'm at my desktop at work, and I use this at work at Dell, uh, I'm on a virtual desktop and I'm dragging files around and I'm opening files and editing them. Every keystroke I'm doing looks like it's happening in front of me, but it's actually happening back in the data center. The value of that is it allows you to sequester apps and content and basically confine it into one place. So think about, think about organizations who have been burned by content leakage or that case where the guy from Goldman Sachs left his laptop in the backseat of a cab. When you create a virtual desktop infrastructure model, that data never leaves the data center unless the person is allowed, consciously allowed to copy it and save it locally. Uh, the beauty of virtual desktops is you as the administrator can define who can do what or not you can even do things like shut down USB ports. Okay, so that's the beauty of it. You get great control, great security. Optimizing IT resources is somewhat the after effect of that, which is if you make it much easier, and by the way, security is never trivial. We're not saying we make security easy because it's not. But what we are saying is when you put your apps and content into one place, where by the way, patching or updating a desktop is as easy as a file drag and drop, you can get your arms around it and it enables organizations to be much more efficient and lean in how they manage their security policies, which therefore allows them to do other things more productively, and that's optimizing their IT resources. Empower the workforce. For a lot of our customers, we'll say step one, if you want to do this BYOD stuff, you want to enable mobility, think about going virtual with your desktops, because once you do that, all you now need to do to get to your content and your apps is to have the agent residing on your device of choice. So it could be at your desk from a fixed device. It could be literally from a Starbucks or not based on policy. It can be while you're almost any place from a laptop or a tablet. So the beauty here is that it enables your people to be productive when they want to be or when you want them to be. And this whole concept of work-life balance and making your employees happy and more productive you can do that by going virtual with your desktops. And then finally, managing costs. <clears throat> um, to go with virtual desktops does imply that there's some build out on the back end because you do have to allocate server resources and storage to set up those virtual desktops. That doesn't come for free. But what does happen is typically the endpoints become much more lean and cost effective and energy efficient. Uh, most of our thin clients are run at about seven watts of electricity. And what happens is the, the process of managing hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of endpoints becomes so, so much easier. Yeah, I mean, literally what you do is if I want to patch a couple few hundred or a thousand endpoints, I do a file drag and drop and blast it out, right? So, so the, the gain here in terms of cost is oftentimes equated to how much more productive and more useful your IT organization uh, can become. I'm not going to belabor all of these. Um, the main message is, is that Dell now with servers, storage, networking, VDI software, VDI endpoints that are branded the wise, thin, and zero clients, truly does offer a, an end-to-end -end solution. Doesn't mean you have to buy all the components from Dell. I mean, that, that'd be nice, but, but the fact of the matter is, is most people already have kit gear already installed in their data center. They might already have PCs that they've bought that haven't fully uh, de de uh, depreciated. But the fact is, is that we can fill in any gaps that you might have with world-class components, whether it's the 13G servers or the storage or the networking or, or the endpoints themselves. Uh, what's really nice is we can offer a single source of su for support for all this. We offer consulting services to figure out the best way to implement all this stuff. And we even have our own broker. You know, if when you think about virtual desktops, certainly Citrix and VMware lead the pack. They are the market makers for this. But we do offer an alternative, which a lot of people like to consider, which is called YZV Workspace. Now, we don't aggressively market this because we love Citrix and we love VMware. Uh, but if somebody wants to find a third alternative, they're welcome to take a, a look at YZV Workspace, which is 
in terms of functionality, a subset of those two guys, but basically has uh, just about all the essential capabilities you need. So let's talk about simpl simplicity and security, which are the two ingredients that can enable you to easily roll out a foundation upon which unified communications or any mix of applications can run uh, in a super secure and efficient manner. Uh, the example I'll give is with Citrix. So Citrix is a huge partner of ours. Uh, one of the leaders, obviously, in virtual desktops. We can offer Citrix-based virtual desktops on a wide range of platforms. And you know, just because there's lots of stuff here doesn't mean it's good. The, the fact is, is what we're trying to show is that based on your budget, the size of your organization, and your intentions and the use cases of the people within your organization, we can craft a very cost-effective yet highly efficient and, uh, and uh, uh, powerful solution to deliver those virtual desktops to your people. Uh, whether it's a full-blown rack uh, based on our, our reference architectures, which are basically provide a blueprint of how to build this out yourself, or one of our little appliances where we've done all the work for you and, uh, and actually prescribe how many people can be satisfied with virtual desktops based on popping in one of these appliances. We kind of have the, the whole back end covered. We work a lot with Citrix and with Microsoft to verify both the Zen server hypervisor and the broker, Zen desktop on top of that. So whenever we offer a Citrix-based or VMware or our own vWorkspace solution, you know that it's been tested uh, you know, extensively and verified by our partners. Um, at the top, we've got a bunch of suggested endpoints. And certainly, you can use a PC, by the way. So if you've got lots of PCs and they haven't fully depreciated, you can use them as endpoints with virtual desktops. The advantage to using a thin client, or what we call a zero client, is security. Because on those devices, the content never sits there, unless you deem that permissible by, by your users' use cases. So uh, to get the most out of a virtual desktop infrastructure, uh, where you never want the content to leave there, where you're kind of watching television and watching what's happening elsewhere, a thin or zero client is the ultimate from a security standpoint. But you might have users, people. Um, I dare call myself a knowledge worker. Uh, somebody who might be hi highly mobile. They want to take their work with them. So when I'm at work, I'm on a virtual desktop. When I leave, I've got a laptop. I've got a laptop with, with Windows 7 on it. So it really depends on the use cases. And then by the way, we can also uh, offer this as a service. And we also work very, very closely with partners who offer services themselves. So we can, we can be the arms dealer to anybody who wants to offer a public cloud. And what I said earlier today uh, in an interview is like, we love all clouds. We don't care if it's a private cloud or a public cloud or a hybrid cloud. We're providing the technology to enable all this stuff to work. So from a Citrix standpoint, you know, we can provide uh, these reference architectures where you just drop stuff into a rack and you follow the blueprint that we write, it's like a big long white paper. And by long, I mean like 350 pages. So you, you read this before you go to bed. But anyway, uh, these, these, these docs actually tell you how to build this stuff out and scale it and really tune it for your, your, your organization. We then also uh, take all this kind of logic and we've built appliances. And this is a real breakthrough. So this first thing called the Dell Appliance for Wise for Citrix is basically prescribed for either 150 dedicated or 300 shared users. And the beauty of this is you pop this appliance in, it's two, two rack units tall, you follow a four step wizard and you're up and running with a VDI implementation. Um, if you want 300 or 150 more, you pop in another one. So we've taken the complexity out and it's prescribed and this is not unlike getting a prescription at the drugstore. We have, it, this is the remedy. If you need 150 users, pop this thing in. If you need 300 shared, pop it in, and you're guaranteed to get it. You don't have to go through any kind of guesswork. You don't have to worry about over-configuring and spending too much money or under-configuring and having people unsat dissatisfied with their user experience. We've done all that testing for you. It also contemplates all the licensing, so it's easy to buy. You just, it's a single SKU. You have two options, shared or dedicated. You order that part number. And basically the licenses, including the cows and everything else, are already built, burned into that thing, so you know exactly how much it's going to cost you per user. So we, our goal is to make it as simple as possible, because simplicity means now you can actually take advantage of the, of the technology. We have a higher end type appliance, and this is yet another 2U uh, form factor, built on our 700 series server. It's called the XC WebScale Converged Appliance, and this is more like the Okay, I'll probably insult somebody. So, so this is like, um, I don't know. This is like your Chevy, 
I mean, Corvette is beautiful, but I mean, okay, that's your, sh and this is sort of like your Lexus or your Mercedes. This is like the higher end, more scalable. So this thing tops out at 300, 150. Yes, you can grow it incrementally, but if you want to scale high end up to the, literally the tens of thousands, you start with three of these guys because it has crossways, uh, high reliability, redundancy is already built in, and you just keep popping in another one and another one. And that's why we call it a, um, a um, engineered solution. It's more like a building block approach. So this, you're going to pay more on a per-user basis, but you get that massive scalability and redundancy built in. This one is more of a, it's great for proof of concept, it's great for pilot, and it's great for small to mid-sized companies. And that's kind of the demarcation between those two. They're, you're saying small to mid-sized, what, what is that small to mid-sized? Um, hundreds, hundreds of people up to maybe a thousand or two. Once you get beyond that and you want to really grow it out to the multiple thousands, tens of thousands, the, high re the strong recommendation is this guy. Yep. Because this is running on the Nutanix software. So that makes you've got a single console. It's really easy to see the whole thing as a single organism. With this one, right in today's version, you're, you're kind of looking at separate entities and separate pockets. We're working on this one to make it more linearly scalable as well. But it'll never scale to the, to the same scale as this one. right? Uh, so the beauty of this is that we're offering choice. Kind of roll it yourself with our reference architecture, using those as your guidelines, or just pick these guys and know exactly what you're going to get without overspending or, or underconfiguring. Because the two biggest like misperceptions about VDI is number one, it's expensive. 400 or 600 bucks per user on this one, a little bit higher on that guy. And number two, it's hard to do, it's complex, it'll take you months to get it up and running. You can get this thing up and running within about an hour and a half, this one within a morning or an afternoon. So you know, we've really put a lot of our uh, you know, thought and a lot of our hard work into making VDI much, much easier than it ever was. And we're taking advantage of hyperconverged infrastructure uh, architecture, right? With this, we've already got, we've got the compute horsepower, we've got the, the storage, it's all integrated into a single chassis, and it takes all the guesswork out, right? Because we've done all that testing. So it means you can quickly react to M&A activity or new, new groups pop up. See, you know, a lot of times organizations will start a small group on VDI to kind of test the waters. Once that's proven itself out, you might want to fold your call center on, or you might want to fold a group of engineers on, you might want to fold the marketing team on. This allows you to do that very quickly and easy. Time to value, you can, you can basically install the thing in an afternoon and be up and running later that day. Right, so you can realize the benefit or not. I mean, you know what? If you find out that VDI is not for you, you're going to find out awfully fast. Right? It's sort of like uh, the difference between playing the stock market and the horses. Well, if I put my money in a horse, I know within about a minute and a half where it went. An interesting analogy. All right. Um, simple to manage. Uh, we've got a single console with these appliances, so you can very quickly see. You know, because one of the other mysteries with VDI has always been. You know, when do I need to add more server horsepower? When do I need to, you know, add more more um, storage, and without overspending, right? So th this way, you can see the overall health, add users very quickly and easily, and because of that, you're taking less risk. And those are all the the, the nice benefits of having a hyperconverged infrastructure appliance. So the lower end guy, right, the one that I said was great for POCs and pilots that goes up to a few hundred, maybe about a thousand or two people uh, before you really probably want to consider the other one, is called the Dell Appliance for Wise for Citrix. We also have a flavor of this for V Workspace, which is our own broker, but the, the focus of this, this session is on the Citrix one. Small and powerful, simple to order and deploy, easy to manage and then you still get really good performance and you're going to give your people the, the, the user experience that they want because we've already, we've already done the testing. Comes in two flavors. Uh, and by the way, these are in the, these, this is in our uh, area, client solutions downstairs. We've got this one on display based on our R730 platform, right? Um, it's a 2U thing, you just pop it in there, 150 or 300 users. We also have a tower model if that's your preference. In a shared configuration, we're talking about 420 bucks per user, and that includes your licensing for your endpoints. And that, that, that tends to be pretty attractive. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, because the whole idea here is we want to make it as simple as possible, so all that stuff's already figured out and burned into the price. Uh, now, the higher-end one, which is run based on the Nutanix software, 
uh, the very highly scalable version. That's called the XC Web Scale Converged Appliance for VDI. Um, same approach, but this is more of a building block to scale out. But you know, you still get the same kind of benefits, right? Great performance, very very specific config, so you know exactly what your people should expect and how much you're, you, from a budget standpoint, you're going to spend. Um, this has a little bit more redundancy built into it. So this is a little bit more robust, right? This has things like you know redundancy built in because when you start out with this guy, you start with three of these two new two U nodes, and then you build that out incre incrementally by adding another node. The reason you start with three is because we want to build in some some redundancy and re uh, extra reliability in there in case one of them uh, barfs. It's a technical term. Um, anyway. The idea here is we make it really simple, so you can still get it up in an afternoon, uh, the whole thing up and running, and you still get a very robust, uh, highly scalable uh, VDI system that gives you all these benefits. I'm not going to read this to you. Um, I'm going to summarize. Um, New the Nutanix software gives us the ability, and they're close partners of ours, and they're on the, on the expo floor, to create this very scalable, easy to manage, uh, robust system that can scale as you add two U nodes to it. So uh, there's really kind of almost no limit to how big it can get, uh, and that's one of the benefits of the Nutanix software from a storage standpoint. Um, and you can, fit different, you can fit it to different customer profiles. You can tweak it. There, this actually comes in different flavors based on prominent use cases. So if you've got a bunch of design engineers, you can configure it for that because it comes in three flavors for those types of users. Or if you've got a bunch of people who are doing basic order entry or call center, you, those are more your task workers. You can satisfy more of them, put it in that config. So it gives you great flexibility. All of this stuff implies a knowledge of your use cases, right? So step one is always understand what your use cases are. So we at Dell offer a service called Blueprint Assessment where our solution architects will sit down with you and figure out, it's a very simple question, what do your people need to be productive? And that's what we will design for them. And by the way, most companies have different types of people doing different types of jobs so we can mix and match and make sure that we're putting the right type of equipment both in the data center and the hands of your end users in terms of endpoints. Um, yeah, so this is really you know, both persistent and non-persistent. I mean, it's a full-blown, highly robust VDI system that originally takes up six U in a rack and grow, can grow from there. Now, talking about robust, we also have an appliance for VDI that does workstation class uh, virtual desktop services. And this is called the Precision Appliance. It's actually a member of our Precision family of workstations. This happens to be a virtual workstation platform where the beauty of this is now for your designers, your people who have been using Precision workstations, instead of being tied to a specific fairly expensive workstation, they can basically access their work from any endpoint capable of rendering what they want to see. Oftentimes that might be a dual or quad core thin client, it could be a PC, it could be a PC at home. But what's great about this is now you can get that one to many benefit. So you can have up to eight engineers sharing a single one of these appliances. So it, from a cost st standpoint now you can save a lot of money. The other thing that this does is it enables what we call real time distance collaboration. Because you don't have to do any more of that follow the sun design, right? You can have somebody in Asia working with somebody in Europe, working with somebody in the U.S. at the same exact time on a project because they're accessing it from wherever they are whenever they want to. Now, you do have to have an endpoint that's capable of rendering what's being shown. But again, remember, even though this is workstation class stuff, you know, 3D fluid dynamics and, you know, the CAD CAM, it's really not that much bandwidth you need because you're just showing pixels. You're just sending pixels across the way and the way these protocols work, and this, in this case it's PC over IP. PC over IP is really efficient because it only sends the pixels that are changing and it's also network um, resilient. In other words, if there's a weak link in there, PC over IP is smart enough to toggle it a little bit but so that by the time it gets to the end user they notice very little, if anything. So the, what, the beauty of all this is that the protocols have advanced even over distance, uh, to the point where they're smart enough to render those pixels at the end where the user might see a small hiccup, if anything, but they're still pretty happy. Um, 
This can support up to eight engineers, eight designers on a single box with what we call VGPU, working with NVIDIA. We use the NVIDIA grid cards. We pop them right in there. They're part of the configuration. They're already in the device. Uh, we also have what we call GPU pass-through, where you can satisfy up to three people with full-blown virtual desktops, workstation class. So it really just depends on what that user needs, and we can uh, craft the right solution for them. And just another case of just matching the hardware and the software with the needs of your people. Again, in every one of these cases, the heavy lifting is happening somewhere else. That end user is just watching it. And everything they're doing looks like it's happening locally, but it's actually happening elsewhere inside the data center. Um, yeah, so I talked about freeing up people from a specific device and allowing collaboration. Those are the two main benefits. And then cost, one for many, one to many. That's still to come, yeah, yeah. Right now it's on the K1, K2 grid cards, yeah. Yeah, we, we're showing grid V2 down in the, in the booth, but it's in a general purpose workload, not, on, not for VDI. Yeah. Doesn't mean we can't, and by the way, it doesn't mean anybody can't purchase uh, the M60 type cards from NVIDIA and build it out themselves. <laughs> we just haven't yet packaged it, and we're not currently offering it yet as, a, as one of our appliances. So uh, basically, uh, for Zen desktop environments, you can have your custom solution based on an RA. You can optimize it per workloads. Um, you can basically go with a small or branch office solution, all of this inside a rack, or you can get one of these appliances that I just talked about. So the reason we're, we're offering so many ways to do it is because, let's face it, no two organizations are the same. No two organizations have the same level of savvy and experience within their IT team, and no two organizations have the same exact mix of use cases. Um, this repeats almost everything I just said. The only thing I'll say, so I'm not going to read it to you. The only thing I'm going to say is we've been talking a lot about Citrix. Obviously, we support pure Microsoft environments with the Hyper-V hi, uh, uh, hypervisor, as well as VMware environments, of course, with VM, uh, VM, VMware ESX uh, server software. So whatever your environment is or whoever you're used to working with or whatever you're leaning toward, we can support it, and in every case, we've done literally thousands of hours of verification testing with these partners to make sure that when we slide our products in, it's already been blessed and verified by them, not just us. We're not just like pasting things together and offering it. We get, this stuff gets blessed by VMware and Citrix and Microsoft as well. Okay, so we've talked about the back end, the, the foundation for a virtual desktop that can deliver the unified communications or whatever your app mix. The, the rest of the equation, however, is not complete until you think about the endpoints. And I have a lot of people will ask me, well, why not just use a PC? And absolutely, go ahead and use a PC if you want. But in a lot of organizations, the IT team and the, and the company itself wants to have more control over what people can, and maybe more importantly, what they can't do, what they don't want them to do. Thin clients are, are a great way to do that. And we offer three flavors. Again, a thin client, if you haven't seen one, it looks more like a cable modem or, or like a, a wireless router than it does a PC. It's basically a little device that's got all the I.O. you need and pretty much nothing else. Uh, so when you power it on, basically all it's doing is, is creating connections and it's attached to a monitor to show the pixels and that's all it does. It doesn't have a lot of local horsepower because all the heavy lifting's happening in the data center. You can buy some that do have more local horsepower if you want to run apps locally or if you need to render lots of like very rich media on, on a single screen. But we go small, medium, and large. And Dell, as a company, is following this nomenclature now. Other parts of the company as well, three, five, and seven. Good, better, best. So the 3,000 are very cost-effective, really small, little, thin clients that basically satisfy the needs of most of us, including myself. We have the mid-range, general-purpose thin clients. These are dual and quad-core devices that are really powerful by themselves, so they can do lots of heavy local processing if you need that. And then we have the 7000, which is the high-end, which has all kinds of extra I.O. options and a little bit more um, power. Uh, and the whole idea here is you can use a zero client, and a zero client is nothing more than a type of thin client that talks just one protocol. And that's the beauty of it, right? Because with a zero client, you don't have any extra software running on that, and all it can do is attach to the back end. So with a zero client, you can't run anything locally, and that's good. That's fine for a lot of companies because they don't want anybody running locally. They don't want that, you know, 
um, disgruntled clerk who says, I can't cruise the internet complaining, because the answer to that is, do your job, you're a clerk, right? Uh, so a zero client, super secure, attaches to the back end, it's all it does. A thin client is a superset. It's a thin client because it does everything a zero does, but it talks multiple protocols, so it can attach to a VMware, it can attach to Citrix, it can attach to pure Microsoft, and it can run apps locally. So you might be thinking, well, why would I want to run apps locally? Isn't the whole idea here to attach for the back end? Because that's where you get the security advantage. The reason you might want to run apps locally is, is a couple reasons. Sometimes organizations will have some legacy apps that either are not kind when, when you try to virtualize them or they're not published for virtual desktops. I mean, we have some customers who have Fortran programs that are running still. So with Windows or Linux or our thin OS op running locally on the device, you kind of have two devices. You're attaching to the back end and you can run stuff locally or do a VPN connection to a, to a host computer to some legacy app. That gives you more flexibility and that's what you get with a thin client. A mobile thin client is just one of these guys in a clamshell, looks like any other laptop, but you can configure it with an embedded operating system and then put controls on it so that even though that person is mobile, um, they, they can only do what you want to allow them to do. You can literally even turn off USB ports if you want. Uh, one, one kind of peculiar use, which is really popular, is in Japan. They use our clamshell mobile thin clients as little all-in-ones, and they lock them up at night. So, and that's the beauty of it. These things are movable, yet you can have great control over who, what you can, can or cannot do with it. And at night, they throw them in a locker. I guess in Japan, they, they work real close to each other. So anyway, uh, that's their tiny little all-in-one. Um, cloud Desktop is nothing more than one of these platforms where you download the image to the endpoint, let it run locally, just like a PC, and then when they log off, it all disappears. It just, just vaporizes. So there you get the, the, uh, the, the full PC experience locally, which means every peripheral you had before works perfectly. You don't have to do any adjustments. As soon as they log off, it's gone, and everything's stored in the data center. So that gives you the best of both worlds. And then finally, we have a product called Cloud Connect. I don't have one in my pocket, but I could. It's uh, smaller than this and it's just a tiny little thin client that you can carry with you. You pop it into a HDMI port on a TV or a screen and you get like a, a local thin client experience that way. Already talked about that. Okay, so in addition to these devices now, we've talked about the back end infrastructure to create the virtual desktops and deliver them. We talked about the endpoints that receive these things to allow you to see them on a monitor. The, the other thing that matters, I talked about these operating systems. Um, Oftentimes you want a local OS, because sometimes you just want a, the browser, if nothing else, right? So there's no reason, like if you can't attach to the back end, well, you should be able to still get to the internet. So we offer Windows Embedded, it's both 7 and Windows 10 IoT. We're the first vendor to offer Windows 10 IoT on the desktop on a thin client. So if you're a Windows shop and you want to put Windows on local, you know, on, on the, on the uh, thin clients, this can be managed by System Center. So you could be, it'll just show up as another Windows device. We have Linux, if you like the idea of a Linux distribution, you're maybe sometimes some companies or engineers will be running on Linux. We can put Linux on your desktop. It's a hardened Linux that we've taken uh, a distribution and, and put some extra kind of safeguards into it because we have these real stringent kind of security concerns that we deal with. And then finally, ThinOS on the end, that's proprietary. That was invented by us, by Wise, uh, before the acquisition uh, from Dell. And that is an operating system. It's, it's more like a firmware base. To call it an OS is, is giving it too much credit, and that's actually a good thing. Thin OS is nothing more than some power on self-test, some housekeeping, a BIOS, a TCP IP stack, and then the protocol you're talking, and that's all it does. The entire size, the footprint of the operating system is about eight megabytes, and the beauty of that is there's no excess baggage. When you have a Thin OS Thin client, when you power it on, the desktop shows up immediately because there's none of that mysterious stuff happening in the background from decades of general purpose development, right? So it's so lightweight and so fast that it actually, when we do benchmark tests of our thin clients based on thin OS or Linux or Windows, it's a, typically a 30 to 40% performance advantage on these thin OS thin clients because they're just so lightweight. Um, so that's actually a good thing. They're also virus immune, and Dell Legal lets me say that. So they are virus and malware immune, and the reason for that is really simple. There's no, there's no published API. There's no user accessible file system. There's no browser. 
right? Because it's just going to make you attach to that back end. That's where you get your browser. So, uh, and that's why about half of all the thin clients we sell are based on thin OS. People love the idea that once they put thin OS on their endpoints, they never have to worry about the endpoint again. They, they're completely out of the, the endpoint management business. They just pop them in and they just forget about it. They're also self-managed. All you have to do is put a pointer in there to a file server and they'll get their updates automatically. We do have a management console for all these thin clients called Wise Device Manager, but that comes into play when you've got, say, 40, 50, 100, 1,000. You, do, you want one console just to take inventory and see where everything is, right? Or you might want to patch 50 at a time or patch this 200 over here, file, drag, and drop. You're all set. Those are the main, now, the main differences is Windows on your desktop, everyone's used to that. So if you can do anything on the desktop, you've got Windows. Linux, you're a Linux shop, a little bit less flexibility because it's Linux, but more flexibility in ThinOS. ThinOS, since it's proprietary, will typically come out with new connectivity features on these guys first because there's, a, there's an army of developers here. This is us. So for things like unified communications, that's why we have unified communications on these two guys right now. And I'll talk about when we can expect it on, on ThinOS. Uh, petting Zoo, go into our area downstairs and you can look at all this stuff. What's kind of cool is we've got an all-in-one, which we'll talk about in a second. 7000 series, lots of I.O., you know, lots of connectivity. It's our high-end dual and quad core. That's what they look like. 5000 series, so I'm being fairly efficient. Happy hour starts at 5. 5000 series uh, is the mid-range, comes in different form factors. Uh, by the way, all these things you can strap onto the back of a monitor, so a lot of people will do that. If you go to San Jose Airport in San Jose, if you look, bother to look behind those arrival and departure screens and all those kind of informational screens at the airport, you'll see one of these guys strapped to the back. They kind of hide in plain sight, because unless someone tells you to look for them, you typically don't notice them. And that's not the only airport. We're in a bunch of airports with these things. People just love the fact that they're so small and efficient, and they tend to run forever. The 5000 series, small compact, very energy efficient, uh, runs on about 12 watts of electricity, and super easy to manage. And then um, that's what they look like. We've got a flavor here based on the Teradici chip for v uh, VMware PC over IP protocol. So that's a zero client for VMware. It's one of our biggest sellers. The all-in-one, basically the all-in-one takes this guy and then packages it inside that form factor. That was driven by a large bank where they wanted the teller's machines, which are pointed at them, to look as nice from the back as they do the front, right? Because without that all-in-one, we would have a 5,000 strapped to the back. And it's not strapped. I mean, it's got visa mount, but it's still kind of connected to the back. They thought that looked a little too not cool enough, so they wanted to have like this beautiful... Uh, one single form factor. And then some people, it's like a religious argument, they'll say, well, it's more secure if it's just got one shell around it as opposed to something attached to the back. So that prompted the, uh, the, this. Um, another typical use case is like an admin at a hospital, anybody who's customer facing. So it's a really nice looking all one. It's downstairs, you can take a look at it yourself. And then finally, the 3000 series is the cost effective, yet still really capable. I mean, for all the stuff that I do, I don't know if you guys are like me, but you know, I do Outlook and PowerPoint and Excel and Word, and you know, I might run a video once in a while, uh, do some do some uh, link stuff like that, and that's that's what I do at my job. These things are more than enough to handle that capability at, at the endpoint. And yeah, cost-effective, flexible, and really good functionality, and they can fit almost anywhere because they're so small. That's what they look like. Okay, a little bit more on ThinOS. Because um, we've talked about, you know, so think about it. Whether it's Link, as you see, or some other application, I've got everything safely stored in the data center. I've got these appliances that make it simple to set up. I've got these endpoints that are self-managed. The other ingredient here is the operating system. Now, with our Windows and Linux thin clients, guess what? If one of them does catch, catch a virus, all you got to do is restart it. You just restart the endpoint because, again, remember, the desktop experience is happening in the data center not on that endpoint device. So if you just power it off and restart it, it comes up totally clean again. But the one advantage you get with ThinOS is that it's actually even more secure because it can't catch a virus in the first place. Um, we can right size it, make it really simple to manage within your, within your um, uh, environment. 
It's got great connectivity, um, and it's a really, really great performance. Again, when you power on a thin OS-based, thin client, people are surprised because they'll move from a PC to a thin client, and they power on the thin client, and the desktop just kind of jumps at them. I mean, some people have literally done this because they're not expecting that desktop to show up so quickly because even though the desktop is running in the data center, which could be miles away, it's just popping up in front of them because there's no, none of that mysterious background stuff running to bring up your desktop. And this is why it's really, really popular in hospitals. Any place where you've got single sign-on and roaming apps, right? you've got this physician who goes from one hospital room to the next, they might be running the same application. They'll tap out with their authentication card. They'll go into the next room, they'll tap in and pop. The thing just shows up right where they left it. So they don't have to wait for any of this kind of restart stuff or, or sign in that we're all kind of like just got numb to. So it's really, really good for that. So the advantages of thin OS is super secure, virus immune, well connected to all your peripherals, great performance, both in terms of, of benchmarking and in terms of just showing up in front of your eyes, and then really, really easy to manage. It's basically a self-managed uh, operating system. Okay, so let's bring this thing back to the title, which would be nice at this point. So we've been talking about unified communications. We've been talking about Link as an example. So now think about this. We've got a VDI environment where all of your content and, and apps are stored safely in the data center. So check that one off. You've got endpoints like thin and zero clients where you've really mitigated the threat of external uh, invasion from malware and viruses, so you can check that one off. Now, if you can run a unified communications platform on top of that and make it easy with our appliances, it's a pretty good thing. And that's what this is. So the benefits of this is, obviously, you get the benefits of unified communications, in this case, Skype for Business or Link. You can basically make your people as productive as they've ever been in a, in, in a much easier way and in a much more secure way because the foundation underneath them is a virtual desktop. And it's a great way to secure and protect your corporate IP because it never leaves the data center. You don't have to worry about the guy or the lady who leaves the laptop in the back of a cab. That can't happen unless you allow it to. The beauty of all this stuff, by the way, is how you set your policies, right? Um, you can give people, you know, you can allow people to take data with them if you want to or not, it's up to you. And, but the beauty is, is with the consoles that, these, that are offered with either Horizon Edition from VMware or Zen Desktop from Citrix, our own vWorkspace, it's really easy to set up those rules, right, based on use case and department of what people can and more importantly cannot do. That's why schools love this stuff because the teachers have great control over what your kid, the kids can do, right? Because it's great that your third grader can access the internet. It's also terrifying that your third grader can access the internet. So some examples of companies that are using kind of this combination of both VDI uh, and, and um, unified communications. And they're seeing some real advantages. And, and one nice thing about this is if you go to dell.com slash um, case studies, right, do a search on WISE, W-Y-S-E. So keyword search on WISE, dell.com slash case studies. You'll see a bunch of case studies that quantify the advantage that hospitals and schools and libraries and financial organizations have realized from going virtual and running their apps on top of that type of a foundation. Really quantified too, like people will say, I saved this much money over time. This is what we experienced. So it's, you know, uh, you can you see how others have already benefited from it. So now that I've talked about all this, and I think this is the last slide, so it's good news. Uh, Imagine the fact that now we've got these appliances which make VDI super easy, right? You don't have to go through months of, of planning and it doesn't take months to bring it up. You can do it in an afternoon. Combine that with ThinOS, which is a bulletproof virus immune endpoint operating system. And you essentially can provide a unified communications or any other application mix on what's basically an easy to install, easy to bring up bulletproof foundation. And that's what you get with both of these. Now, uh, you know, my, my, my grand finale here is that it's actually coming soon. So it's in beta test right now, this combination. And we view this as kind of the ultimate combination of providing a super secure yet easy to implement foundation upon which you can offer any mix of applications to your people in a virtual environment as opposed to physical. Having said that, is this for everybody? No, no, not, not even within Dell. I mean, um, there are certain people 
uh, many of us in this room probably who you, you would never go virtual with because you're t you need that data with you all the time. And that's fine because your company trusts you with that. It's really what, what are you trusted to do? What's your job? You know, I don't want an order entry clerk running all over the place with, you know, confidential IP. So some of us, based on our roles within the organization, we can take the data with us. The company wants us to take the data with us. But a lot of other people, based on their role, I mean, that's the last thing you would want. And that's the beauty of this. You can set that up, and, and the policies themselves are not difficult to either set up or enforce. So why Dell for this? Number one, we've made VDI easy to plan, easy to plan deploy, and run. We can actually manage this for you if you wish off-prem. Uh, and we work very closely, by the way, with the cloud companies like Amazon Web Services and at Microsoft Azure, right? So we are, you know, I was in a, on this thing earlier, uh, Dell World Live, where I basically said we love all clouds. We don't care if it's public, private, or hybrid. We're providing technology to make this stuff work. Uh, we're the, we are the only true end-to-end -end provider. I mean, other companies have like uh, the piece parts. Well, one big company had the piece parts and then broke into two companies. But the beauty of this is not only do we offer everything from end to end, by the way, it doesn't have to be all Dell, that's fine, we can fill in the gaps, but we have s software like Foglight that can give you this end to end view of the whole thing like it's a big single organism, VDI from end to end, all the way from the data center to the endpoint to see what's happening and where. Um, secure with both the appliances, um, putting everything in the data center and then the bulletproof endpoints, and then the fact that we have more experience in this than anybody, the, the inventor of the thin client works with us. He's my boss. Yeah, he's got his name on there. He's the inventor, along with somebody else. He's still with us. And we've got this, this army of what we call solution architects in the field, people who are really, really expert in this, who can help figure out with you what's the best solution to meet, to meet the type of company you are or organization. You might be a school. And who needs what to be productive and and, and to not over-configure it. So on that, I think, there we go. Thank you. That's the end of the slides. I'm happy to take any questions you might have, understanding that you know some of these parties are like 15 minutes from now. So we're all experts on VDI and running unified communications on top of it. That's great. Something to think about, you guys, right? And what I would suggest is if you're here tomorrow, come by this the client um, solutions area in the in the Dell you know Expo. Check these thin clients out. We've got people who can talk to you about the end-to-end -end solutions, the various OSs, and the various uh, environments. Okay. Hey, thanks. And I'll stick around for a few minutes. Everybody wants to talk afterwards. So enjoy yourselves, you guys. Thank you. Yep. Sure. Thanks.